All right, so we're making really good progress here. Let's finish up our own touch event here. So we know that we are now fetching the finger and the movement and so forth. I'm gonna get rid of all of this log because we don't need it right now. I'm gonna get rid of this as well. Now, at the end of our own touch, before we return true to say that everything is okay, just return something here, we need to call another method here, which is called invalidate. So if you say invalidate, there we go, it's void invalidate. What this does, it just redraws this screen. So anything that is inside, it's redrawn. So it's very important to do this. Why? Well, because remember that this on touch, the way that I'm explaining here, it may feel, it may sound like this is a slow process, right? This on touch and this happens, blah, blah, blah. But remember, as you touch the screen, there's a million things that are happening quickly and firing up really quickly, right? So all of this is really fast. So the ability for this on touch event method to draw itself and, and do all of these things, it also has to make sure that it invalidates everything or redraws the screen at really fast. That way you can actually see the motion of things happening. That's the reason why we have to call this invalidate to redraw the screen before we return true. Let's go ahead and work on touch started first. So this is the crucial one because this will tell us if the touch has started, that means we are now in business, meaning we are now going to be able to create the path as users move their finger across the screen. So here, what we need to do, we need to do a few things. The first thing is we need to create that path, right? Because the path is going to be the object that will be able to store all of the path, all of the touches. Remember, as you touch, we're creating points and we put all of that in a path. So that way you can see the actual line. So I'm going to say path, such, create a path. And I'm also going to go ahead and create a point because, again, we need points in order for us to trace everything. So I'm going to say here, um, store the last point in path. And for the path, it's going to be store the path for a given touch. Okay. Now, the first thing we need to do, we're gonna put an if statement here, which will say if path map, remember this path map we created earlier uh, is a key value hash map, which allows us to have an integer as the key and the path object as the value, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're gonna check to see if this path map that we created earlier, if it's empty or, or if it contains a certain pointer ID, okay? In this case, I'm gonna say path map that contains now we can use this method because we're talking about a hash map That's right there's a method called contains key or contains value so we can check well what contains what well we can say if that contains a pointer id that we are passing here okay and if that's true then we know that we can actually get the path by saying path is equal to path map because it has something so we're going to get something from it and we're going to pass the pointer id which is this here remember the pointer id has the location of the touch okay so we're setting ourselves up to create the actual path in which we can then show the users as they move their finger through through the screen so here getting and then we're going to say point i'm going to go to previous point map right say dot get the last one this case is going to be again we're going to pass the pointer id because this id will know exactly which points we are talking about not just a crazy new point but this is point that we are tracing through our screen now else if there's nothing in our path map here which contains all of our points this one here if there's empty then we know this is a new touch if you will then we're going to create a new path right because we know that we are creating something new so we're going to say path and instantiate it's called a new path as such and then i'm going to say path mat map let's see as such i'm going to say dot put right i'm going to put integer in this case i'm going to point pointer as an integer the key and for the value just pass the path because this new path we are talking about and then of course point point we're going to create a new point and then we'll say previous point map 
that put. I'm going to put, of course, the pointer ID and I'm going to pass the point, just like we did up there. Very nice. Now, regardless of anything here, we have to move to the coordinates of the touch, right? Because now we want to make sure that we move the path to the actual coordinate where the path is. So if the movement is from 0, x0 zero to x10, then we have to actually move everything so that we can actually see the path. Okay, so I'm going to say path that move to, there's that method there, that's wonderful, we'll move to x and y, which are the floats that we're passing when we say touch screen. And you notice if you click on touch screen, we are calling it inside here, which in, incidentally, we're actually passing all of those objects, all of those points, you see, which are x, y, and of course the pointer ID, which we are passing everything in here. And remember, all of this is happening once we know that users have indeed touched the screen. Oh, very nice. Okay, does it make sense? Okay, so once we do that, of course, we have to make sure that point x, we need to make sure that we're actually adding points, is equal to, I'm going to have to make it an integer, so the x and point dot y int as well, make it y. Okay, so just assigning the points, point x and y to whatever we're getting from our x and y values. This is for the touch started. We're getting there, guys. We're getting there. Okay. The next one we need to look at is the touched moved because this one will then say, okay, this one touch started. It sets everything up because we now know that something happened. Users have touched the screen. But now we want to trace that movement so that way we have that smooth movement that will create the actual path on the screen. So we know exactly that we're actually drawing something. So what we need to do here is the following. Instead of touch moved, I'm going to go ahead and say for. Remember, this event here is motion event, which means it's, it's tracking all of the motion that we're creating on the screen as we move around. So it's really fast and it's getting a lot of values. With that said, that means we have to actually loop through our event pointer count because as, as we move around, we're creating different points, right? So we need to loop through and get all this point. And as we create all those points, we then create the lines. We then paint on the screen to depict what would be the actual drawing, okay? So I'm going to say four. I'm going to create an int here int i is equal to zero, i is less than event, check this out, dot get pointer count, there we go, I'm going to say i plus plus, right, as long as we're still getting all those points, meaning that we're moving our finger around, then we have those points, so we can actually do something with it, so what do we need to do here, I'm going to say int, pointer ID again, which is just the finger, okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, say is equal index or event that get pointer ID, and I'm going to just pass I. So for each iteration that we go through, we're getting each pointer ID and put inside of our pointer ID variable there. Pointer index is equal to event that find pointer index and pass i. Oh, in fact, I'm sorry, we have to actually pass, pass the pointer id, right? Because now we're creating the actual index. All right. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to say if, we're going to check if path map, which has all of those objects, all of those points, right? If path map contains key pointer id, one of these fingers keys that we got in here, then what do we need to do? We need to get the new coordinates for the pointer. So I'm going to say float new x, right? Because we move, remember, we are moving here, right? We're moving our finger. So we need to get each time we're going to get a new x and y value. So new x, I'm going to say event that get x. And of course, I'm going to pass the pointer id or index in this case, okay? So for float new y, let's say event that get y as such pointer index. We're getting there, we're getting there. 
And once that is done, once we have the new x, the new y, then we are able to do the following. We can now create a path. I'm going to say path okay, is equal to new, oh, is equal to path map dot get. I'm going to pass the pointer ID. Okay, so we get the path and previous point associated with this. Okay, I'm going to also say point point is equal to previous map that cat and I'm going to pass our pointer ID. Okay, now we need to calculate how far not calculate uh, how far the user moved from the from the last let's see update right because we want to figure out okay so what we're going to do let's see here i'm going to create a float called delta x which is going to be we're going to use the math library here to help us out absolute value because we need to get the absolute value of the new x point minus point dot x okay and then float delta y is math that absolute value of new y minus point y so we getting the difference between the new point and the, the new x and the point x as well as new y and the point y so just how far have we moved since the last update because remember again this is motion which means it happens really fast so we're trying to trace making sure to we see this movement as we go down okay so we're going to use these values this is all still inside of the if uh, the for loop by the way and then what we're going to do we're going to check we're going to say if delta x is greater or equal to touch tolerance which is 10 we created at the top or delta y is greater or equal to touch tolerance also okay if that's the case so here let me write a little comment here so here what we're doing we say if the distance is significant can't enough to be considered a movement then we just keep going okay we actually create the path then that means we are gonna now gonna say path we're gonna use the path that quad two okay so now we're gonna be tracing around we're gonna say we're gonna say from point X whatever we are point y so this point where our screen where our finger is x plus point x these calculations I've done before divide by 2 okay and then for the other coordinate I'm gonna say new y plus point dot y and I'm gonna divide that by two. So essentially what are we doing here? We are just saying move to we say move the path to the new location. That's all we're doing here. Okay? And once we do that, we need to do something else. We need to actually store the new coordinates. Because again, remember we are moving here. We are having tracing. We are following the finger as it goes down. So now we need to store the new coordinates. I'm going to say point that x is, is going to be equal to what? I'm going to make it cast it to new x, right? And point that y. I'm going to also cast it to new y. Right. Now let's save this and give a quick run and see if this is going to work. We should be able to show something on the screen as we move. Oh, look at that. It looks very weird, but at least we know that this is actually working. Oh, nice. Very, very nice. Not what we desire, but this is good. At least we are able to write something, right? 
Very nice. All right, perfect. So in the next video, we will keep working on this and make this better. Of course, this is not what we want. We want it to be more uh, smooth and actually resembling a line as if you were sliding your finger through the screen. All right, I'll see you next.